Hey, welcome back guys. Today we're checking out Overview. The guys who created this, uh, they actually won an award for the best educational experience on Viveport at GDC. So that's pretty amazing. Congrats to the team. So I'm going to read what it says on the Steam page, just so you guys can understand what kind of experience this is. Supposedly, it's very mind-blowing. You get to feel the whole scale of the universe in VR. That's a way to instill awe into people. Sounds pretty inspiring, and I really love experiences like this. Space is an awesome topic to explore within virtual. We know a lot about space. That's pretty amazing from this pale blue dot. But it's hard to grasp it and understand it. It lets you experience rather than just reading or watching. You get to be immersed and that's pretty amazing. So from the Steam page, where do we stand in the universe? For the first time in history, humanity can see for itself. Using scientific data from NASA and European Space Agency Overview is an interactive experience with real positions of all planets, stars, galaxies that we know of. Created by Space Maverick Orbital Views with film director Paul Meisier, Overview is an accurate and poetic description of our story in the cosmos. How far are we away from the sun? How big is our galaxy? How does it feel like to be inside a nebula? You can now find your own answers to these questions. Space exploration is at your fingertips. All right, guys, for this experience, I'll keep my mouth shut so you guys can just be immersed in this and I won't interrupt it too much. Hope you guys enjoy this. Hope you learned something. Hope you're inspired. And if you have VR, you should definitely check this out and buy it. It's pretty amazing. So yeah, let's dive right in. Chapter one, Earth. You actually don't need your motion controls, so I'm gonna put my controllers down. Earth, one of eight planets circling the sun. Together, they form the solar system. In all the universe as we know it today, the Earth is the only body able to support life. Life on Earth is possible due to a unique combination of factors. One is that the Earth's axis of rotation is tilted at 23.5 degrees from its orbit, which is the circle it makes around the Sun. The result of this tilt is that the northern and southern halves of the Earth, its hemispheres, receive different amounts of radiation and energy throughout the year, creating our seasonal cycle. It's a Milky Way right there. Life on Earth also owes a lot to its natural satellite, the Moon. There are other planets in the solar system that have satellites, sometimes several, but our moon, at a quarter the size of the Earth, is the largest relative to its planet of origin. Its gravitational pull is powerful enough to create the cycle of oceanic tides. It would also have deflected many asteroids during the formation of our solar system and have protected the Earth from their impact. Thank goodness. Chapter 2, Solar System. Look at that pale blue dot. Now it's just a pixel. You can see the trails of all the planets. on the headset it's insane everyone has to try this out 
What you are seeing is an accurate model of our solar system. The four planets closest to our Sun are Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars. These four planets are all made of solid rock and their sizes are of similar magnitude. But again, one of the unique characteristics of the Earth is its distance from the Sun, which allows enough water to remain liquid and sustain life. Fine-tuned. Beyond Mars is the asteroid belt, composed of a huge number of rock and ice bodies ranging in size from a few inches to more than hundreds of miles across. Astro we're like surrounded by fucking asteroids. Holy shit. Further still from the Sun are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. These four outer planets are much larger than the inner ones, and their composition is different. They are the gas giants. If they were closer to the Sun, the gases that make up their outer layer would warm up and vanish into space. Beyond the orbit of Neptune lies the Kuiper Belt, a vast area where millions of asteroids lie dormant. Even more asteroids. Past this point in the solar system, there only seem to be dwarf planets like Pluto and very long distance comets. Some astronomers speculate there may be a ninth planet circling our sun, but its existence remains unproven. This is our immediate neighborhood in space. One very small corner of a vast universe. Yep, 100%. Before we look beyond our solar system, let's just take a moment to admire some of its planets more closely. Chapter 3, Planets. This is Mars. Like Earth, Mars has an atmosphere, a thin layer of gas held by gravity onto the surface of the planet. But the rocks that make the core of Mars are less dense than those of Earth, and Mars is also half the size of our planet. The gravity at the surface of Mars is thus much weaker than that of Earth, and its atmosphere is consequently much thinner. This is in stark contrast to its neighbor, the fifth planet from our sun, Jupiter. Damn. Jupiter is a beast. Jupiter is a gas giant ten times the size of our planet and 300 times its mass. In fact, it is larger and more massive than all the remaining planets in the solar system put together. It's a beast. Had it been slightly more massive still, then the gases at its core would have been compressed and heated enough for Jupiter to light up and it would have become a star, just like the sun. It looks like a Van Gogh painting also, the texture of it. Jupiter is a gas giant, 10 times the size of our planet and 300 times its mass. The colors we see on the surface of Jupiter come from the gases it's made of. These bands of color are the visible indicators of the massive gas storm swirling within its atmosphere. 
The largest and most fierce of these storms is the Great Red Spot south of Jupiter's equator. This one storm is twice as large as our planet and was already raging on its surface when we started observing Jupiter nearly 400 years ago. There's a storm Even with winds twice as big as Earth. 400 miles per hour, this huge storm takes no fewer than seven days to make a full circle on itself. Just a week to go around. That's how fast it's spinning. Everything's so fine-tuned to the sun. It's amazing. It's a matrix. Chapter 4. Saturn. Having everything to scale, and just using your head to look around and everything's in 3D really helps put education in perspective. Education is a really good... There is a jewel in the crown of our solar system. Topic to explain what we are. All the gas giants have more or less visible rings, but those of Saturn are truly spectacular. narrator kind of sounds like Morgan Freeman it's very good music sound effects it's very atmospheric pretty immersive and since it's dark you don't really notice like the the goggle effect in VR because it looks like it looks full Saturn have a width of five times the diameter of planet Earth, but they are less than a mile thick. The reason we can see them so well is that they're made of billions of ice particles which together act as a giant reflector for sunlight. Ice particles less than a mile thick. Super effective, so that's how we can see it. fascinating and you can see the planet's uh, shadow cast over the ring because of the angle it forms with the Sun this shadow that Saturn casts on its rings is impossible to observe from an earthbound telescope only probes from the Voyager and Cassini missions could take photographs of it and send them back to Earth Earth is somewhere there. Chapter 5, Milky Way. Beautiful. 
beautiful. That's our sun right there. The sun is more than a hundred times the size of Earth. At its core, where the pressure is at its greatest, the temperature rises to more than 50 million degrees. Under these conditions, atoms are forced to combine and form other elements. This is nuclear fusion on a grand scale. Look around you. Can you see this bright band running across the sky? Yes. It's the Milky Way. And this is where we are going. Nothing in the known universe moves faster than light. We just scaled up. human scale, it appears instantaneous. But in fact, traveling at 186,000 miles per second, light from the sun takes eight minutes to reach planet Earth. Near Neptune, the outermost planet of our solar system, light has already traveled for more than four hours since it left the sun. We are now near the furthest point ever reached by a man-made object. Forty years ago, the Voyager mission sent a probe into space. This probe keeps traveling, and today, the light from the sun takes nearly 20 hours to reach it. It is now the furthest man-made object in space. I see. We are so far away now. But to get to the very end of our solar system, we must go further still, and travel a full light year. It is the distance that light will travel within one year. From this point, we must keep traveling for three more light years in order to find the first neighbor to our solar system. This star is called Proxima Centauri. Proxima Centauri. Proxima Centauri. Whoa. Space is not empty. Although they have a very low density, we find various gases and dusts there. Fire Earth. Fire solar system. You're like light years now, light years away. You will never. Well, maybe someday travel out. Really, 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 really,
This one nebula spans 10 light years. It's more than 10 times larger than our entire solar system. Some of these nebulae can spread over thousands of light years. In the middle of it is a white dwarf, the remains of the star from which this cloud originated. Amazing. Amazing. Stars that are much more massive than our sun have a very different destiny. They implode when they burn out. These are the supernova. Debris from these massive explosions scatter across regions far greater than simple nebulae. But the end result is always the same. The clouds of gas and dust that will form from the death of these stars are the birthplace for the next generation of stars to come. We were just in Over it. Over millions of years, the particles of these clouds will gather to form new solar systems just like ours. Everything we see in the universe is the result of this endless cycle. This is amazing. pretty much a uh, universe simulator everyone has to try this like right now we are literally on the Milky Way we're seeing it in a, like this a God perspective is our galaxy it is a disk as wide as a hundred thousand light years it's the side view of this disk you can see in the night sky from Earth we think our galaxy contains as many as a hundred billion stars. Some smaller, some much, much larger than our sun. Damn. We are looking at the Milky Way. If you are wondering, in VR, our solar system is within one arm of this spiral, right there, 26,000 light years from its center. Right there, right there. That's we, where we are. And in comparison, boom. This whole thing For is light years. Time, we believe there was nothing greater than our galaxy. But now we know it's only one part of a much larger whole. There has to be aliens. We're so small, yet we can see light years. Boy, we like understand this. Like we understand. We have telescopes that let us see this far too. Like calculate where everything is. Chapter six, beyond. Look at that. Amazing. It's amazing to see. In ancient Greece, people named our galaxy the Milky Way because they could only see the edge of its disk and it looked like milk in the night. They could locate themselves and predict seasonal cycles from its movement in the sky. But in those times, we thought that what we saw at night was all there was to the universe. 
Thanks to centuries of scientific research and to the development of new technology, we now know that the universe is much, much larger than what our eyes can see. What you see here is the local group. It's a cluster of a dozen galaxies, each as large as our own Milky Way. This local group makes for billions and billions of stars altogether. All these dots you see are galaxies that we know and study today. All their locations are accurate. This is the largest observation of the universe we can make today. On a very large scale, galaxies group into a cosmic web that holds together all the visible matter in the universe. These superclusters are the greatest astronomic structures that we are aware of. This is not the end of the universe. There may be more galaxies beyond what you see here. It's only that since the beginning of the universe 13 billion years ago, the light from those stars has not yet had the time to reach the only point we can see it from. Earth. My room has become the observable universe really cool everything is like accurately represented in this educational experience everyone has to try this most definitely Amazing. It's very cinematic. It has good narration. The graphics look really good. Puts everything into uh, perspective with all the distances represented really well in VR. Nice background music. Good narration. A nice long experience. It's well, it's like very accurate. And they use like real data. And it's the first time ever for it to be done in VR. So that's amazing. It's called the overview because I think it's relating to the thing called the overview effect that astronauts get when they're in space. They, there's a phenomenon, if you look it up, it's pretty interesting. Basically, astronauts get this overall feeling, like a better feeling of Earth, and they can actually, s like, so, so disattached from being on, planet, on the planet and just seeing the planet far away in space, seeing how, like, it's all connected instill something much greater. It's like a very religious experience for them. It's like you think whatever your home is on Earth, it's actually the whole Earth is your home. 
the whole earth I mean, it's like so alive when you see it from space how and how like it's all like connected it's very much alive when you see it from above you don't see any borders it's all like one thing and that and the organism humans are just fighting when you zoom out it's actually all one but it's hard to recognize when you're like in it but from far away it's like everyone chill out there's way more to it it's pretty amazing that we're so small yet we're able to see this far it's beautiful it's abstract Really good lighting effects also. But yeah, um, hope you guys enjoy this. Hope you guys learned something. If you have VR, definitely check this app out. They won awards. There is a pale blue dot. AKA One Strange Rock. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Oh, it looks like there's an uh, explorer section. What is this? Alright, so it looks like there's a few new things coming out soon. Let's check out Sagan. Carl Sagan helped us to perceive the position of planet Earth in the cosmos. Alright, so we're at Earth. It looks like you can scale. That's our solar system. Really good experience. Definitely everyone should check this out. Pretty mind blowing. I learned a lot. You guys learned a lot. And yeah, I really enjoyed this. It's really cool. One of my favorite VR experiences so far. Also, if you guys like what I'm wearing, it's from this brand called Into the AM. I have a uh, special discount code that they gave me for like 20 or so percent off. If you guys would like to use it, I'll put it in the description and in the comments below. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this. See you guys in the next one. Peace.